Bet nu, investoru pieredze, investīciju veidu, objektu un uzņēmumu izvēlē. How to be a better startup investor, investor experience in investment option choices. Uh, we will have always, also uh, the session for questions. So you can send in your questions uh, on a phone number. You do have uh, used programmers. Uh, and um, now please welcome Petri Lechmuskowski. Tagad saņemamies arī tie galdiņi, kas tur tālāk lūdzu. Please welcome Petri Lechmuskowski. Paldies. Thank you. American style. <laughs> it works. Yeah, it works. It's, it's nice to be in Riga. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different story than the previous presentations. What I understood of those, I, I'm, a, I'm an investor. I'm not a service provider or anything. I'm telling about investor story. A uh, little bit about the challenges what the investors are facing, private investors, as a private person, so investing to, through a vehicle. Uh, the GDP growth in Europe is low. I'm coming from Finland. The Finnish National Bank updated their forecast downwards today morning to being close to 0.5% growth or less. Uh, and that, that's a different, difficult environment for investor, private investor. The market volatility has been high. Whatever asset class you take, it has been difficult. Uh, I have invested in uh, what you call uh, buildings, premises. That's maybe the only asset class which hasn't had volatility on during recent years. Uh, there are plentiful of asset classes. We have heard today basically everything from uh, foreign exchange to gold to stock market to venture capital. Uh, there are plentiful of options for as a private person. Where good and should I invest? And, and there are different markets. Uh, sorry to say, as Latvia, the Baltics, and Finland, and even Sweden, we are the periphery of Europe. We are not the markets. We are the rounding error of the markets. And, and to invest on these markets to certain asset classes are difficult. If you look, for example, the stock market performances in in these countries compared to Central Europe, US, et cetera, we haven't performing that well. The ups and downs have been huge. And, and as, a, as an investor, the big question is that where could I find a low volatility market which performs continuously well? And, and, and that's what I've been searching for now for multiple of years. Haven't found it yet. It's, it's like of this dream somewhere, but it is. I'm, I'm going to touch an asset class, which was a little bit touched on previous presentation, close by. Not exactly the same, but close by. A little bit about my, my background. I'm an entrepreneur. I have started six companies, uh, took them to 120 million, one company. I still own a company with over 100 employees. We do about 40 million turnover. My sister, her younger sister, her, her husband is managing daily on that, on that company. Uh, I did my first investments in the beginning of the 90s, when my company began to have a like, surplus of capital. Different asset classes. I have uh, all invested in properties, old companies existing, bonds, corporate loans, venture capital funds, and lately in direct, direct private investments. I have not invested in, in, in foreign capital, we did loads in the, my company of that, because we did loads of foreign trade and we tried to gamble a little bit, lost some money on that. And commodities, those are the two areas which I have not touched, per se. Uh, that's, that's my background. What, what I want to talk about today and a little bit what I've been doing the last five years full time is investing high growth companies. Uh, that's from Forbes yesterday. A German millionaire invested 27 million in a Lithuanian company. Valued about same value that company, which is about three years old, than Tallink is valued in, in, in the stock exchange. That's a three-year-old company valued at the same amount than Tallink is, with a huge amount of votes. 
etc. They don't own any property. They are act. They are marketplace, and I'm generating about 150 million turnover so far. This is the companies what I'm talking about: high growth companies that can conquer the world. Uh, they do not correspond to market volatility in any way. The only time when they corresponded to market was 2000. That's the only time when they have corresponded to market. Uh, they're young companies, typically in less than five years old. Because then after five to six years, the corporation begins to kick in and, and the growth, the valuation, et cetera, begin to slow down. In not always, but many cases. They utilize digitalization and other market disruptions, which means that they are not location dependent. They can be Latvian, they can be Lithuanian, they can be all over the world. I, I, I would say that's a good example of the Lithuanian company. It's, it's being valued of, of half a billion close, et cetera. That there is no, no need that to be somewhere in the world. The world is open today. Uh, they don't need to be technology orientated. This example company is te technology is simple. It's a business idea and how, how they figure that out. It's nothing like scientists build. Uh, and then really, they can be any, anywhere in the world. They were located in the Vilnius. Okay. In Finland, we had Supercell uh, that was sold so far. What's a. Uh, the owners of Supercell have received roughly about two billion compensation for about two thirds of the company. That the companies can be anywhere. That's the companies I have been working for the last five years. I, I do other asset classes, but for example, stock market, I have an asset manager who manages that. Because to get some uh, return on investment, you have to go to US markets, you have to go far, far, far away. And you have to have a specialist for, on, on that. Uh, I have a people managing properties. They don't buy and sell because I, I, I keep, keep those and really on, on the rent, rent etc. You have to focus, I'm going to touch as an investor, you have to focus where you're good at. And, and let the, where you're bad, let the professionals do it. We have a Forex guy here, let him do handle that one. It's a complicated market with loads and loads of problems. Results a little bit. Uh, Flycap touched about the venture capital IRR. That was 12.6. Angel investor and early stage investor IRR in UK is 22 and US is 27%. That there are good returns on that if you do it properly. The investment periods are long. This is not liquid investment or asset class. Investment periods are between five to 10 years. This is the same length than you would think when you go and invest in properties, et cetera. This is not a liquid asset class as an investment. Investments can get high. As, as a private person, the investments can be that your pro rata is one million plus. And then you have to consider, okay, do I have that much money? It's, it's, uh, my highest single investment is half a million in a single company. And that's like my, my risk ratio goes over then, if it goes, even if the company would be going well. As an investor, this is time, time demanding. It's, it's, this is not an asset class being easy. This is not something it's, it's I leave it and it's miracles happen. When I begin to invest in this asset class, miracles happened. I gave the money and the money disappeared. And, um, that happens if you are not an active. It's teamwork. One of the things what I learned was that do not ever invest alone. You are not smarter than everyone else is. Do you always try to get other investors to go with you? This is something which we, we started in Finland doing about five, six years ago. Uh, Estonia, Estban, who is basically, they started to do that about three years ago. I don't know how much this Latban is doing still a syndication, but investors to getting together and investing together. Uh, the reason being, 
uh, venture capitalists who are coming typically after us, they say that one in 10 succeeds. As an early stage investor, we say that in one in 20 succeeds. That you, to make money, you have to be, have, be able to invest in 20 companies. Uh, U.S. Harvard study says that if you invest in less than 13 companies, less than one, three companies, you cannot make money in this asset class. That you have to spread your risk. Uh, my results in line with this. In line with this. This is by far the best forming asset class I have at the moment. Uh, it's, it's performing better than properties. My stock market hasn't gone that well <laughs> lately because of some of some companies' bets with it, etc. Uh, some of the other asset cats, yeah, it's performing better than the corporate bonds, etc. Lessons learned, and and really from an investor to another investor, private investor. Nothing typically seems is what it looks like. It's, that's the one thing what I learned and hard way. That's when the money is beginning to disappear. It's, it's, you have to be careful. You have to know what you are doing. It's a sales pitch happening. You are being sold something. And, and it might not be the thing what you think it is. Uh, you can make a difference in the whole thing. If you have time, this is, as I mentioned, time demanding. You can help these companies. They are in the growth phase. There's always missing something. Time, people, money, knowledge, etc. You can make a difference with these companies. Any hand, any head, any heart they get in to help them will enable them to grow faster. Uh, the real growth companies are, have a problem in the growth. They don't have enough resources. Bad companies don't get growth. I have, a, I have a company which I invested in, in basically when they were starting. After two years, they made 18 million turnover and 2 million profit. And then their problem was that how can we get enough people to grow, <coughs> etc. And then one thing what was a little bit touched in, in the gold was that this is an asset among assets. Uh, I invest roughly about 10% of my capital avoidable disposal capital in this asset class. And I have invested almost in 50 companies, 49 companies to date. But it's only 10% of my net worth, what I have put on this. And I don't calculate the house where I live, et cetera, and the net worth. Or but that, that's a, like something which you have to keep in mind, that do not over-invest. This is a risk asset class. What it is about? I'm an angel, I'm a devil. My job is to keep, keep the speed going up of these companies. Uh, venture capitalists spend about average in US three hours with the investment target, maybe a little bit more here. I spend in a week, that's three hours a month. I spend in about a, a week about eight hours with my investment target. It's my job to kick their ass that they keep going. It, it is my Sometimes push them and sometimes support them. It's, I have a one excellent, excellent target where whose uh, entrepreneur's uh, father and grandfather died, and this was like two months ago, and now his mother went into the hospital for operation, a big operation. And then what you do, you try to keep this guy, yeah, you had to go to work. You had to do your job. You, you have to support him mentally. It's, it's that he doesn't like break down. And he's in the middle of, uh, Weird crisis because he, he in, inherits a big farm, but there is no cash to pay the taxes. That then he has to also sell his family farm and to get the money to pay the taxes, etc. But yeah, it, it, it is the job of the angel and devil. It's one day I'm nice and one day I'm, I'm pain in the butt. Corporations and high growth early companies are not the same things. And, and that's the people coming from corporation background to be, make a big mistake. They think this works as a corporation. Corporations are about execution, good salesperson, and let's, let's do it. 
it's to take a company from 60 million to 120 million, it's much easier than to take company's first million. I know that from experience. We are doing a, the company I started in 89. We're taking that, that now to 45 million. It's a piece of cake compared to first million turnover. Startup is product market fit. Will it work, even work? Most cases, these ideas just don't work. There is a huge flaws because of the unexperienced or, or the situation difference of the experience, et cetera. It is different worlds and different things. And, and with your backgrounds, you have to be critical to yourself. What do I know and what I don't know? If you have a corporate background, typically, you have to understand what does mean to work in corporation with loads of resources. It's, it's, I had 180 people in the company I sold in 2005. I had loads of resources. You could send them, oh yeah, get the lawyer and send here and then consultants there and et cetera. You had loads of resources. Early stage companies do not have resources. The time is the biggest shortage they have. I'm coming back on this, but do not fall in love with the ideas. Ideas are just a multiplier of the execution. People have to get things done, and they have to get those things done fast. Everyone has dreams and ideas, but only few people get those done. It's when you, as an investor, if you build your company, and if you have been successful, and if you look backwards, it is about the execution you have done. It's not about the idea you have. Rarely the ideas are ready. Rarely they are excellent or they haven't been done before. And this, this is a, like one important thing what, what comes. And I show like how much we spent when I analyze companies, how much we spent on the idea lately. But that's a typical mistake of uh, early stage investors, even early stage VCs, they focus on the idea. This sounds the greatest thing in the world. But they forget, can it be done, and can this team get it done? Uh, the company in, uh, I mentioned, 18 million turnover in two years and two million profit. The idea was a week. That company's idea was a week. Done multiple times, nothing, nothing on that. But the guys were brilliant in execution. They conquered and kicked all the asses of all the competitors in the market and, and took, took that market space. Companies have five stages. Uh, and, and this is where the sales pitch comes in. The entrepreneurs trying to convince you, us telling that we are in the business validation, we are in the innov innovation thing, when they are in hallucination in some high high space in their minds. And there are no shortcuts to the success. I have started six companies. I have gone through all these stages. Every serial entrepreneur, successful, when you talk with them, they, every time when they start a company, they go through these same stages. The only difference, how fast do you move to the next one? That's the difference in serial entrepreneur. But you have to go through this. And there's, a, there's the help you can give this. If you are not in love, if you are not in doing daily, you can tell them when they are in hallucination. Or when they are like, is someone sharing their vision of the business externally or not? Or is there really a business happening? Yeah. And one, one of the challenges is the money can distract you. There's a study in the US done this where the startups Biggest reason of failure is overfinancing. Think about company, uh, that Lithuanian company, three, four years, that entrepreneur, it's a lady, and she was in her 20s, and having a 60 million in the bank account, what do you, what do, you do when you have 60 million in the bank account? It's not your, but it's the company's, but I have access to it. People get, I have had to, like, when people have a big financing round, they drop the ball. They just, oh, okay, it's done. They think the financing is the goal. And goal is really for entrepreneur and, and investor to sell that company somewhere. That's the only time when we make investor makes money, when it's being sold somewhere, or IPO as in, the, in the dreams. 
Are you are you doing some personality testing or something? Yes, we are doing. We do a little bit. There is it. Uh, it, it we, we we have actually invested a couple of personality testing or HR companies. A company in Finland called Tunitori, which is one of the largest on the internet to work, basically, I don't know, marketplace for work. Uh, and, and there is a correlation, uh, there is a, we can't talk about, there is a uh, cor cor correlation with uh, certain personalities and success in, in this stage. But it's only in certain stage. You stand it's at one certain, certain time the company comes in corporation. And then you need the different personalities. In the US, and that's entrepreneurs again, these dreams. In the US of the VC financed companies, only 2% of the founders are in managing director or similar position after five years. Because you have to bring the real manager. When the company begins to grow, you have to bring the real managers in. You have to bring the corporation. Think about Apple. Scully came in, Eric Smith into Google. It's, you have all of these companies have this behind. Facebook had, uh, Mark had these guys behind him who were the experienced corporate managers. Because it, it's a different, when you find the business, it's a totally different game again then. Then you have to scale it. That's why I, I, uh, I brought this quote this, uh, from Stephen Plank. Is, and it, it works everywhere, the difference between, between the winning startups and those who lose is that the winners understand why customers buy, the losers never do. And this is true with any company. This is, is it are you startup or old company? Uh, my company which I sold is the oldest in the field of that field in the world. It's, and, and, and person, one of those was that we, every, we had to figure this out every second year. And we figured it out. And it could be the market leader, et cetera, et cetera, for a long, long time. Uh, one of the challenges, and which was hard for me, is being a successful entrepreneur, you are king of the hill. At least you thought about that. The problem was that I did not know myself. I was good at knowing what I had been doing, but I went on a totally different field. You had to be critical of yourself. You might be good what you have done, but when you move out your specialty with a different team, et cetera, et cetera, you have to learn again. And, and you have to know yourself. Uh, there are different kinds of investors. You have to figure out where are you in this group. There are government, there are fr family, friends, and fools. I don't know how big is the crowdfunding in, in Latvia, but I classify this in the fools group. People, it's a charity work, really, more than any investing. There's the angel investor, there are the industrial VCs, and, 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 and then there are the venture capitalist investors. These are the players, and you have to know them. You have to, what are their targets? What are they aiming for? There might be a couple other ones, so like family office, et cetera, but family office is I typically rate on the angel investor level, really. It's just that they're investing bigger, bigger amounts There are different investor strategies. Uh, the most common investor strategy for private investors is the first one. Fool's nice hobby, I got rich charity. That is the most common. That's how I started. I got rich, and then I didn't know what I was doing. That's, that's the most typical strategy of private investors. There is no clue what they're doing. There is no strategy. Uh, and when you, when you begin to do, you become more either industry agnostic or then you begin to be a business investor. I invest in good businesses. I have done uh, extensive IT companies. I have done uh, food, distribution, retail. Uh, what else I have done? That's, that's about segments I have done. Multiple different. But I always analyze that as a business. Is it a good business? I want to go in good business. I don't want to be in bad businesses. Other ones, it's more, more gamble. When you go, go global, when you go big, it's, it's, and then it comes to like, it comes to like, you could say, a bigger game. Uh, 
some of the companies are like I, <coughs> I have invested, they are not anymore in the early stage investor sense, the VCs have taken over. I have uh, several companies who have raised like several tens of millions capital and then it's the big guys who dictate what happens. And, 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 and then of course the, the strategy called spray and pray. Uh, what's the biggest VC fund in Latvia? And how much do they have in the management? Okay, they, they typically more go on spray and pray. They do all over and try to hit from there, they get the hits from there. Typically the funds need to be substantial in size. In, in, in a, it's, a, it's like your fund is what we call a micro VC and, and, and there's a micro VCs and then there are the real VCs who are typically, uh, one of my investors in one company is like, it's a 4.2 billion fund. It's, it's, and this is like small chunk in that whole investment portfolio. Know, you, go, know yourself and the other investors who are coming with you. As I mentioned, don't ever invest alone. It's trying to get, because you are not the smartest guy on the table. What is your exit strategy? Have you ever thought about it? What will happen with this company? Can it be sold? Large number of the companies cannot be sold. There's no way about it. And it might be that the entrepreneur does not want to sell it. He wants to build the company, but he wants your money to help him to build the company himself. And, and then you are stuck with that. You don't get your money out. You need to know the exit strategy of all the people involved. What's your in, in, uh, investment perspective? Uh, I was founding member on the Finnish Business Angel Network in 2011. And, and still after four or five years, the angels speak about investment perspective of two to three years, maybe four, maximum five. When the reality is between five to ten, always. It, it is a long perspective, you have to be ready to invest. And you have to be able to invest multiple times of the money. It's not that I give you a small amount of money and then it's there. It is a multiple times investment you have to be capable of doing. Uh, really depending on the cash available what you have on there multiple times. A typical mistake is two big investments in one go. That's the most common mistake I did and, and I, my friends have done. Two big investments. I, I mastered this, I bit too much. I did, I did that with different other segments or asset classes also, yeah, I mastered this. And, and then it a little bit cost money to learn that I didn't master anything. Uh, when, I, when I did first property investments in, in in the 90s, uh, does anyone know what happened in Finland in 92? I did the leveraged property investments with currencies. 92, Finnish currency was devaluated with 30%. It suddenly I was in deep shit with debt in properties, as my company was, etc. But we survived that, etc. But yeah, you had to be on, on that sense. Don't, this asset class, do not leverage. Do not try to leverage in any way. You might leverage maybe it's stock market, etc. Today, I, 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 the only what properties I leverage, nothing else. It's because you, it's, it's more stable volatility, it's, it's still big with the market. And one thing what has to be when you invest together, who is responsible for the investment? Who is going to manage that company? If you are five, six people, someone has to be I'm going to kick the ass of these guys. I'm going to, for the next two years, I'm going to make them to do the work what they promised to do. Is it raining or sunny? It doesn't matter. What day or week is it? What month of the year it is? It doesn't matter. I have to keep them going. Whatever it means. It's, it might be the nice guy or the bad guy. We fire entrepreneurs. We change them if they're bad. If they're bad for the company, we take them out. Not their ownership, but as the work position. It's uh, last year, three companies, we removed the entrepreneurs out from the company and replaced them with someone else and or shuffled within the company. Even if they are the owners? Even if they are the owners. They keep the ownership. That's a different. The work and the ownership doesn't, in this world, can't be together. It is, but partially it can't be. Because if they do not perform, the entrepreneur typically is the, the final what keeps the company growing. And, and then you have to move in. 
sometimes we do mistakes. Sometimes we actually we reroute one and then we brought him back in. Typically, they also understand, yeah, we're having a trouble. And, and, and it's for them, typically. Surprising, often they found it it's an eases their mind because they have seen the problem. Mm -hmm. But it's for someone to take a step say, I can't do it. But are you doing it even being a minority investor? Yes, we have a shareholder agreement for these kind of things. You have an agreement saying yes. that you can do it. We have a shareholder agreement which typically says that the investor majority can fire and remove the CEO. Majority. Investor majority. And as a typically early stage, there might be four or five people investors. And if three of them decide it, then and the entrepreneurs are not as investors. That's that's a like common thing in our shareholder agreement. Uh, and same certain other things what are dictated on the shareholder agreement. One thing is what you should learn, and now now the Fly cap could, I don't know how you, nice, nice micro VC or bad micro VC. The money, if there happens an exit, the money is not divided based on ownership. In Finland, to give an example, in Finland about three years ago, there was an exit for 30 million. Company was sold for 30 million. The founders, the entrepreneurs owned 80%. 80% of 30 million people, oh, they made loads of money. The founders got out of that 30 million only 2 million, even because even they owned the 80% of the company. Because there comes again the contracts. In. Liquidation preference is something what typically VCs bring in. Sorry, I don't know if you bring it in, but yeah, liquidation preference is something, and that goes over the ownership. In that case, 30 million exit. The investor had invested 10 million in with 2.5 times liquidation preference. What it meant that first when this company was sold, the investor got 25 million out of the 30 million. And after that, he owned roughly about 20%. He got out of the 5 million, he got 20%, and then there were a few million left for the founders. That that's a something which entrepreneurs and investors typically do not realize. In Silicon Valley 2013, average liquidation preference was 2.7, which was, for me, it's surprisingly high, but that's the statistics would go. 2.7 times is the liquidation preference. The later stage investors take out first. What's your role when you go in the company? One, of course, it is to keep it going, but then some of this was touched on, on, on the previous presentation. Uh, one is to take the role of the exit. The entrepreneur's role is always to build a great company. And you cannot distract from him. His role is to build a great company. You as the investor then has to decide what role are we going to take. Or if you are multiple investors. One might be that support on the building the company and then other investor takes. I try to figure out the exit strategy for this. And it's going to take time and it, it's going to be continuous communication. It's, it's surprisingly on, on the, was it the European Venture Capital Association research from UK, where they had, where they focused, corporate governance is where we focus a lot. And there it was zero, I was surprised. Because the corporate governance and the bookkeeping, et cetera, is typically mess in this small company. They don't have a clue what it does mean. What activations do their balance, et cetera, et cetera. They don't have a clue, the entrepreneurs. We have to take care of that. Because it doesn't have anything to do with the success of the company. It's something base, basic back things what need to work. We auditors are damn ex important for the company because they can avoid problems. We had had a couple of times where we had a company, and typically they get more money when they're almost going bust. They were about to get money, and then some things were figured out in the papers, and we missed the investment. And then it falls on us, you, the old investors, Will you kill the company or will you give us more money? And that's a hard decision when you're in that kind of situation. You missed just the investment round. And then someone comes here, I'm going to die now, or do you want to give you money? And typically, the investors are so stupid, they will give the money. And then they try to figure, can it get financed in some later stage? But these are the stages what really finding, building, and, and, and managing the exit. 
Uh, typically, if venture capitalists come in, that's typically where their roles also partially fall in. They take these roles. In, in good or bad, uh, we had an, in summer on a table on exit for 64 million. The venture capitalists said, no, we won't take this. We, the small investors, said, yes, please. But the investors thought that it's too small. And then they give, gave five million more money. Let's run a little bit more. Not enough zeros on that. And, and, and that's what happens. So like, for example, even when we have a contract, we lose the control in one stage. It moves to the bigger guys who brought them some more money into the table. OK, what about the tools? Uh, Typically, everyone thinks that the investment is, is you invest in equity. About half of the monetary value I have done is different thing than direct equity. It's, it's, it's a certain kind of loans, about half. And I, I'll touch a little bit about the tools, what you have. And, and that's, this is something which took me a long, long time to learn. What are the benefits? What are the drawbacks, et cetera? Equity per se is a bad for an investor because it takes damn long time to get repaid. It can be only paid back when it's, there's an exit. And, 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 and that's, that's, an, that's a, if it takes 10 years, you don't get 10 years. Uh, I, I do loads of loans, not converted debts, really loans, operation loans with the higher in interest because these ones are risk companies, et cetera. In the loan side, typically you charge about maybe 30% 30, 30 interest from the company. But everything you have to understand, what are you, heck are you doing? It, everything depends on this, your strategy. If you don't have a strategy, you go with the stream or with the wind, and that's a bad situation. If you do not figure out what you want to do, it's, it's a bad asset class to come in. No one else is going to help you. What kind of risk factors are you going to take? Uh, what's best for the investment target? You have to figure that way also. You have to understand their business. It's not always loan or not always equity, et cetera. And, and, and who are you investing with? Are you going with similar people than you are? Is, is their agenda the same than yours? Or are there other people in, 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 in the table? We had done a couple of investments with corporate, corporate investors, and that's a bad deal. They have a different agenda. They have a different agenda of that if that's a good company, we want to buy it cheap. And we want to sell it with the maximum price. You, you end up having a little bit, little bit different or like discussion on, on that and, and, and not, for, not good for the investor. Loans with a twist, it, it, it is, it's, uh, the twist is typically high, high interest, et cetera. The companies need this money. We take an advantage of the situation. They are high risk. They don't get money from the bank. Uh, it takes time. I had a company now which we organized a bank loan for 1 million euros. But that's a company already making a little bit over a million turnover, et cetera. Three-year-old company. But that's not before. And this was a surprise. It was a little bit. We used our, et cetera. That's, that's a long, one, one way of do, doing those convertible notes. Um, more common in the US, a little bit more common in uh, Baltics, not that much in done in, in, in uh, Scandinavia, Sweden, Denmark, Norway. Uh, nice tools, easy, fast to implement, etc. Good for the companies who can raise capital on, on the go, etc. Uh, there are open questions left. The shareholder agreement is one. That's a contract we dictate how the company is being controlled and what decisions are being made and how the money, if there is an exit, is being divided. Typically, convertible notes don't have that part included. You need to figure that out, how to, how to manage, because you don't own the company yet, et cetera. And it has an investor downside risk, because it, it's, you don't set the value of the company when you invest. You let that to be later on. And if it grows too fast, then you invest at a high price. And direct investments, it, it is capital tied down for unseen for future. This is not liquid asset. You cannot get rid of, of your investment if you are in need for money. And, and one thing, what you have to also think about, how about the later, later round terms? Can I invest second round, third round, fifth round, fourth? 
six round, et cetera. I counted from a database called Crunchbase, and one company have had 13 rounds. Now, I don't know if all the investors kept investing all the round, but it's a large amounts of money in per investor in that sense if you invested all of the rounds. And then there are loads of hybrids. In, in Finland, we have seen a large amount of uh, micro VCs coming with this royalty investment project investment strategies where they have a prior, prioritized money flow back to them before any other investor has, et cetera. And, and then you have trends, milestone, conditional investments, uh, typically extremely difficult to manage. I, there are a couple who I have seen going through more than failed. The milestones have been not met in the investor's opinion, in the entrepreneur's opinion, the milestones were met, et cetera. And, and, and then, of course, sweat investments. People as investors don't always need to bring in money. You can also bring your knowledge. And, and we, as me, me and my, my partners and colleagues, we say that the investment and the knowledge are going too different. They go hand in hand. The people working for the company are the investors, should be compensated for the work, what they've done for the company. Not on the value increase, but really on the work based what they are. And you can calculate that how much 0. 25% of a year for the work if I do continuous work for those, et cetera. Typically, investor mistakes. Uh, this is the box. Size of the box is, is how much we spend time on a new investment. Does anyone see what reads on the smallest box? Idea. Yeah, it says idea on it. That's how much money we spend on idea. Not that interesting. We spend typically money, uh, time in the idea about in a couple of hours. We count that in hours. Business potential, we count in weeks. We evaluate what's in the market, who is playing, what has been done, what other investments has been done in that market. There has been, there been exits, what sizes are the competitors, et cetera, et cetera. And the la longest time we spend is with the team learning potential. How capable of they are learning? And this one you can test. It's, are, they, are they capable of taking something in? Why was Steve Jobs kicked out from Apple? He was not able to learn at that stage. Why was Eric Smith, sorry, Eric, uh, Larry Page put in a corner room with closed doors with no direct reporters or employees by Eric Smith? He was not able to learn. You had to measure that. When the guys start to learn, the Steve Jobs got lucky that he was kicked out. And then he did the next, and he failed. And then he did Pixar, and he succeeded. Then he learned to learn. Same thing with Larry Page. He learned. He was about to be kicked out from Google. The biggest owner of Google was like, if you read, he was in the corner room with no one walking in. And then a few days away from being fired, kicked out by Eric Smith. And he realized that I had to learn. I had to learn how to behave. I had to learn, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what we measure in, in the people. We try to measure, are they capable of learning? Surprisingly, many companies and entrepreneurs are not able to learn. Surprisingly. It's a huge amount. Most of the entrepreneurs are not capable of learning. And speed learning is the question. Not really that, yeah, I spent 10 years to learn this. I had to speed learn everything in, in one year, what takes 10 years normally. We call it mistake, fall in love with the idea. That's what I did. That's my first investment. So I fall in love with the idea. This is the greatest sounding idea in the world. Mm, yeah. Money disappeared. Other mistakes? Spend you. Do your due diligence properly. In, in, in stock market assets, or typically the, the due diligence is done by someone else. In this, you have to do the due diligence. Either you or together with someone. There might be whatever. They might claim that we have this much orders and they are not orders, et cetera, et cetera. This is not any standard asset class which has a rating being done. That's a common mistake, people coming from the bank world, they think this is rated asset class. No, it's not. You get whatever you can dream on this. Uh, 
There is no truth on this business. Anything can happen. Uh, you need to know the principles and, and, and then go with the principles. There's no single truth for anything. You need to know certain principles on this industry. You have to learn those and typically learn those from experience. One is that every financing round, the valuation has to double. If that doesn't happen, you are losing money. Every valuation round, it has to double. Uh, if company is willing to give you 30, 40% of the shares, there's something wrong with the company. Why would they give you that much? Or if they are not willing to give you on that round for, typical uh, rule of thumb is 20% in the round. Company gives 20% of the shares in the round. round. If there's a deviation, etc. There are a number of these principles you have to learn and, and know, and you can only figure this out, either doing it and learning by, or doing that together with other people. Fear of missing out. Uh, that's a common mistake. You think you've seen the biggest thing in the world after Facebook, and, and you, you're fearing that you're missing out. It's much better to miss it out. It's at that stage when you invest as a private investor, the company still might do a totally different thing what you now see. It's, I have this principle, if I get this fear of missing out, that's a signal for me, do not invest. There's something I can't figure now out going on if I get this fear of missing out. It sounds like you never, never would take any great idea, never ever. No, great ideas, you, you know that, the, you, you know, typically the great ideas is so, that sense funny because, uh, I don't know, sorry, I don't remember your name, from Flycap, I don't know who said it, is it Thiel or someone who said that they only invest on companies they argue. They yeah. don't ever invest in companies where they, everyone agree on. They invest only in companies where they argue. Uh, amongst themselves? Yeah, amongst themselves, that is this good, is this bad? Because that's then there is something which everyone doesn't see. The thing where you think, yeah, this is great. Everyone else, it has been done multiple times. It's too obvious. It's too simple. It's not, building great company is not a simple thing. It, it, it's not a simple, there has to be something on that. That you, uh, parcel, oh, I don't go, parcel, oh, yeah, I will do. And then you know, okay, I have to study more about this. But here, oh, I have to get into this. Then you, okay. Then, then you are like, it's, yeah, there's something everyone else is going to see. It's going to be a great company person. I don't know, is it, the, is it the Anderson or someone of them have this principle that, yeah, we have to disagree, to agree invest. If we agree everyone, then they, we pass it on. Uh, uh, one of the best venture capitalists in, from Boston, I don't remember now their name, is that the, in their web page a few years ago we were looking, they say, we did not invest in these companies even we had the opportunity. And, and I think, did it start with Apple or Hevlet Packard? And then they had all these companies. And they're one of the best performing companies in, in the venture capital business. Yeah, you can miss the big things also and make great business. Because then you, if, you, if you try this pray and pray, you, you miss it a lot also. The one, one common mistake is thinking, I'm different. I, I know this. That was like, a, I, I, a successful entrepreneur, I thought that I knew I'm a great. And I didn't know how lousy I was on this when I started. That's, that's the one thing what you have to be humble and, and critical to yourself. And, and yeah, I don't know. This is different business what I built my own business, where I built my own wealth in. Investor becomes an entrepreneur. A common thing. Investor invests because he wants to run this company. I have a family friend who has invested in one company. He went as an investor. Now he has invested 25 million in that company. And he owns 90% of the company. So is that thing to do or is no, that No, that's something which you should not do. It's, it's because? Yeah, if you want to become an entrepreneur, yes, then you should do it. But it's not always does it work because it might be totally depending on the people whom you are going to replace, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but yeah, this, this is like something, yeah, if, if that's a strategy, it's fine. It, it, it is a few times I had this in my mind, should I do this? Then I have this, oh no, I have a strategy, I follow my strategy. A couple times there has been a situation where there's a great team and they would need someone to lead them or manage them, typically, not lead, manage them. And then you think, oh, well, maybe I should come up. 
but it's 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 really up to this is there are no one truths it's not a black and white but sorry we we can complement the team later bringing outside people sorry not call can uh, bringing outside people to the team is hard task if the team is not ready you see it's missing this and this and this which are actually important it's better to miss it up it's hard to bring new people in that team it, it's it can have certain like CFO missing, et cetera, but the core team has to be already able to, able to work and do it. You could outsource certain tasks, that's fine. But thinking that we can bring these people in, and afterwards, it's hard. And really coming from a corporate perspective, building a startup and running companies two different things. That's, I missed, I built six companies, and when I begin to do this one, I, I thought it's like running company. That's a totally different thing to run a company than build a company. It's totally two different skills, totally two different workloads. Everything is different. If you build your company and if you go and invest on this asset class, it's not the same thing what you are doing at the moment. You are already successful. You are running corporations. Corporation for me might be a small one, but it's a stable business. It might be growing, but it's, there is a copyable, there is a repeatable business model which can be repeated and, and done. And, and one, one mistake is sales is the problem. Typically, it's the sales is not the problem. It's typically figuring out how the hell and where and when and how and what to sell and to who. That is the problem. Thank you. Questions? Wow. Thank you. Sorry. 50 seconds. Perfect, perfect. All right. Uh, there's uh, one question with how much you've started. When how much? You, yeah, you had your own company and then you had some yeah. spare money and then you... Yeah, I, 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 it's, 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 I started my company in 83. It's, it's, it's like in, in when I began to invest, we were already making like... What was that company? It's, it's in... Uh, you don't know the name. It's no, no, I mean the, 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 what kind of business? Distribution, distribution. Uh, IT goods, computer games, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. All right. It's, it's, uh, then you had some spare money and you decided yeah. to... The company was making money. And then I said, okay, let's invest in somewhere. It's, uh, I saw loads of young teams, people want to build their entrepreneurs, etc. Okay, and uh, how much it was for the first time? It's, we, I did the first, first invest investments were too big. Too or big? Too big. It's, you don't know, when you do your first investment, you don't know a single thing about the team or the company, etc. Is there, is there a percentage you, you should spare not more than from your spare money? Up to 10%. Up to 10% from yeah. what you've got? Yeah, yeah. From your assets. Yeah. Spare is like, in, spare for me is what's in the bank. All right. But it might be asset classes that you combine of the net, net worth. All right. It's, it's. Uh, uh, why do you keep consistently developing small companies rather than uh, those corporations, which is much easier, as you said? That's a question from Klaus. Uh, I'm, I'm a third generation entrepreneur. Uh, I sold my company to a big corporation. I was 11,000 employee. I hated big corporation, per se. There's, there are good things and there are bad things. It's in and and. and it's, it's something, it, you could take it longer. You could go and take it longer. But then you become more like the entrepreneur with them. Uh -huh. And, and, and I, I like, we, we work like two to three years with the company. And then we move next. And, and, and then once, once it becomes too big, it's not interesting anymore for you. Yeah, it is. But then it's these guys, these venture capitalists come and they say, and they don't want to hear about us anymore. <laughs> All right. Uh, cut your time. Any questions, please? All right, anything to invest in? Really? There's standing somebody who loves to invest in small startups. Do you have any? Uh, not Anyone great having idea? a startup to invest in? <laughs> yes, come on. We have a few minutes to pitch. <laughs> the, the, yeah, you can uh, do some pitch. Don't start with the words, I have that great idea. That's <laughs> the first rule. Please don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a, a microphone? Uh, so, maybe a very easy question. What yes, Lacht, just a second. Yeah, Runa Teksha. 
What is your recommendation for a Latvian business person? Latvian business person, I would say, you have to start somewhere. Start investing. There are good Latvian companies. I don't know that much. I have looked much more. There are Estonian companies, Swedish companies, Finnish companies. But they are good companies. You have to try, start somewhere and try to learn. Don't always invest. That's like my mistake. It's, I think, I think so the first investment I did was like 70, 80,000 euros in one company. And it went bust after two months. It's, it's the money disappeared, etc. cetera. It's, it's try, start with small. This is a learning process. Mm -hmm. Start with small. Uh, once again, the uh, sale times be per quo. Ar ko sākt, kur investēt? Jā, faktiski, varbūt, ko iesaka Latvijā biznesmeņiem, teiksim, kur ir labākā tā vieta, kur uh, visizdevīgā, kā rīkoties, uh -huh. vieta, kas... Uh, that, that would be a question if you would know the Latvian situation, where to start with, but as, as you already uh, answered that. Ok, um, vēl kāds jautājums droši? Jā, tu daļ, mikrofonu. You like a venture capital company. How do you help uh, to the starters? You don't give only the money, don't you? No. You help with the disease. You have help with improving, uh, communicating, managing. What do you do for them more uh, except the money? It's, uh, we work heavily with the companies we invest in. We typically, we, we try to uh, understand when we, before we do a due diligence, understand what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses. And, and the entrepreneurs typically are first or second time, but they haven't built the big companies. They, they have certain things they know and certain things they don't know. And, and, and we try to identify what, what they, are they are not good at. And then we begin to work that on that areas. Typically is that, okay, what's my, who's my customer is a good example. They don't have a clue. Typically a startup doesn't have a clue who is their customer. And then we begin to teach them on that. How do you find or how to figure out who is your customer? This is a great thing. So don't use any outside trainers or consultants. Just go in, have somebody uh, who can consult you with some, some spare money to come <laughs> in with. So it's a Which great... are set the shares for that? <laughs> Which are the one thing what you can't do, we can't do, you can't outsource learning. You can a startup cannot engage consultants. Because they cannot, they cannot afford to outsource the learning. Because it is then the consultant who learns, not the entrepreneurs. We kick their ass, we force them to meet customers, we go with them, we record them, we rework their tools, etc., etc. But we force them to do the work. Mm -hmm. They have to learn. If they have become to entrepreneurs, you, does anyone know a successful company that have outsourced their success? I don't know a single one. <laughs> one more question about uh, over financing. Could you say the same thing about employees that you have seen when employees are over financed and they lose their uh, greed and, and, uh, and maybe a grip just because they have two big salaries? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it happens. Okay, we should keep them hungry all the time. You have to keep them. I, I was well known that I, I don't pay well. It's still the best guys came to work for me. Why? I don't know. Oh, come on, you do know. It's, it, it is. The companies really, it's, it's, uh, there are lots of studies. It's, it's hard, uh, now I, uh, a little bit harder to put on a Latvian perspective, but at certain level, the money does not make you anymore. You have your car, you have your house, you have your stereos, etc. Then the money begins to lose the meaning. You, you search for something. You have to a certain level, but you don't have to pay much higher than that. Mm -hmm. So it's when, when I started in the, I started in Latvia. I actually, I have had a company in Latvia in 2006. Uh, when we employed first guy, the, we were interviewing here was the Revalo, what was the big hotel mm -hmm. there. We we're interviewing people there, and, and and half of the question was that yeah, do I get my pay in the envelope? Mm -hmm. That was the first thing we said, no, we don't pay anything, and it, it's with fully right. taxed. So don't ever hire somebody who has already a house and a car or two cars and, and uh, good life. Yes, right. that's, that's one thing. We, we don't invest in a company where the entrepreneurs take more, too much money out. 
Okay. We, we have a US strategy called Bean Camp. So in case there was somebody to go to airport to pick you up uh, in a Volvo S80, it would be already a mistake. Not really. Then I would have, if he made money previously, yeah, it's fine. Okay. But I'm not going to pay for his <laughs> upgrade in the car. <laughs> All right. One last question, please. Pedes, your times. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you. Pedi.